Canada is the only country in the Western world that has no law on abortion. That's quite extreme and it's quite absurd. There are 100,000 abortions that happen every year here in Canada. 33 billboards that just say Canada has no abortion laws. And our number one reaction is that's not true. Wow. And they'll say, no, there has to be a law. Surely someone who's 22 weeks pregnant can't get an abortion, but they can. Oh, of course you can't abort a child just because it's a girl. And the fact is there is no law that prevents that here in Canada. Let's talk about what we have common ground. We have so much common ground. It's a far more unifying issue than a lot of people think it is. For the 2019 election, we're focusing on 70 ridings right across Canada, the most winnable ridings for pro-lifers, so that when we need a law, comes up with the law, and we introduce it in the House, we can start getting it passed. I've been involved in so many campaigns. You know, they were won by one, two, maybe three votes. So every vote counts. If there's a pro-life candidate, you know, purchase a party membership, make sure you get to the nomination, because we can't afford to be losing this. Welcome back to the show. One of the beautiful things about Canada is that any citizen can be involved in the shaping of our national conversations, advancing of great ideas, and choosing of our leaders if we simply get involved. As David Maines, one of the most beloved Christian leaders in our national history, used to say, the nation goes to those who show up. Care about poverty, human trafficking, fiscal prudence, domestic security, First Nations issues, our children's education, or any other noteworthy cause, Simply exercise your freedom of speech and engage in our democratic process and you can have a great impact. Today in studio, we actually have not one, but two guests representing two organizations started by individuals doing just this, exercising their voices and engaging in our treasured democracy. Tabitha Ewart is a legal counsel with a movement called We Need a Law. We Need a Law is a vibrant organization committed to raising awareness about the reality that Canada is the only democracy in the world which provides no legal protection for the unborn at any stage of pregnancy. Scott Hayward is the co-founder of a movement called Right Now. Right Now exists to nominate and elect pro-life politicians by mobilizing Canadians on the ground level. They believe that the most effective way to advance their social cause is to simply get like-minded people elected. Makes sense. Both organizations are primarily next generation driven and both organizations have caught the attention of national media such as CBC, CTV and McLean's Magazine. They are committed to their cause, stepping into the national arena and making waves. I'm looking forward to introducing them to you, learning from them and discussing how average Canadians, just like you and I, can make a real impact on our nation for the better. So let's get to it. Wow, so welcome to the show, guys. Tabitha, Scott, so appreciate you guys being Thank here you. with me in studio today. Representing two different organizations that, that have a similar pulse, similar heart, just to get people involved, right? And specifically pro-life people. And so let's start with you, Tabitha. We Need a Law. Uh, tell us a little bit about who you are, what you guys do. Yeah, so We Need a Law is a campaign that, um, quite simply, it, it seeks to mobilize Canadians and to persuade our political leaders to pass laws that protect preborn children. I mean, as you know, Canada is the only country in the, dem in the Western world that has no law on abortion, and that's, that's quite extreme and it's quite absurd. There are 100,000 abortions that happen every year here in Canada, and We Need a Law that stops, um, stops that this from happening. You know, I was recently speaking at an event, it was probably about 800 people, and I, I said, how many of you guys know that there's no legal protection for the unborn right up to nine months? There was literally a corporate gasp in the room. Like, people really don't know. Are, do you find that when you go out on the road with this message, that people simply don't know that this is the oh, reality? completely. I mean, it's one of the things, they've done polls, and about 77% of Canadians do not know that we have no law. And we've done a, a billboard campaign where we put billboards up across this country, um, 33 billboards that just say, Canada has no abortion laws. And our number one reaction is, that's not true. Wow. And they'll say, no, there has to be a law. There's got to be a limit in terms of, you know, what gestational age, like surely someone who's 22 weeks pregnant can't get an abortion but they can they'll say like oh of course you can't abort a child because of the gender of the child or just because it's a girl and the fact is there is no law that prevents that here in Canada and that's what we want to see change right now Scott are you finding that people are surprised about that as well when you guys are out and about doing your work you know it's an interesting question because in between election cycles sometimes we'll go out and we'll knock on doors and talk to Canadians about where they are on this issue and people are absolutely shocked to hear that Canada is one of three countries in the world where there's absolutely no restriction 
doctrine legally whatsoever on abortion. And what we find is there are a lot of common ground with Canadians out there. You know, not every Canadian might be 100% pro-life, but a lot of them would believe in a late-term restriction on abortion or against something, some sort of restriction against sex selective or something of that nature. So there's a lot of common ground out there to be found with Canadians to move on these issues politically. And as a matter of fact, there was a survey that was done, and you have to forgive me, I don't remember who actually did it, but I remember it came out a few years ago that said it was over 70% of Canadians when they were fully informed about the legislative reality said, hey, there should be some kind of a, a law at least. Now, now to be clear, are, can one of you guys explain why there is no law on abortion? Yeah, so I mean the history goes back to 1969. Um, we had our first abortion law, so before 1969 it was completely illegal. And in 1969 they set up this scheme where you could get an abortion but you had to have the recommendation of doctors and there was something called a therapeutic abortion committee that would have to approve the abortion. And so um, there was Dr. Henry Morgenthaler, um, very infamous, he was performing illegal abortions and he wanted to see this this law change and so he challenged it to the Supreme Court and that went to a case in 1988 the Supreme Court ruled under in RV Morgenthaler's the case name and it said that law um, it violated the Charter because they found that the committee was arbitrary in terms of whether they would approve or not and they said if you're gonna make abortion legal you can't do it in this arbitrary manner and, and what's really interesting is they said um, unanimously in that decision that they expected Parliament to follow it up with another law, to try again, to try it without the arbitrary and the unfairness of the previous law. Mm -hmm. And basically it became a political hot potato at this point and we've lacked to having the political leaders um, and, and a informed public in order to get that legislation to happen. That's what we're here to advocate for. So like We Need a Law has a proposal called the International Standards Law. It just seeks to bring us in line with the majority of countries like Germany, like Spain, banning abortion after 13 weeks, providing much needed counseling and a waiting period so that the woman is making an informed choice in what she's doing. Wow, powerful, powerful. It just kind of makes sense, the international standards approach. Um, so what we're going to do right now, one of the things that you do, it's absolutely brilliant, is you do these displays all across Canada. I'm not going to spill the beans on what it looks like because we're going to show it in a second. And it is so impacting. Uh, and then I'm, we're going to talk a little bit more about the responses to this display and uh, what we can do practically if people care about this issue. So let's watch this clip. Hi there, my name is Mike Schutten and I'm the director of We Need a Law.ca. As you can see, we're standing here in the midst of flags. We're actually standing here in the middle of 100,000 flags representing the 100,000 lives lost to abortion every year. We have with us here two young volunteers. W what are your names, girls? Carrie DeBoer, Rachel Campen. Carrie and Rachel, Carrie's going to share with us what they've been doing for the past hour. We've been handing out pamphlets to people on the streets and talking to, with them about what we were doing. Most of the comments were good, but some were different. They were pretty good. And Rachel, what are some of the things that people are saying to you as you're handing out pamphlets to them? Um, they're very encouraging words. They like they tell us to keep up the good work and keep on pushing. Isn't that isn't that awesome? And that is actually the response of many people when they see this flag display. We've had a lot of experiences say there's not really one that sticks out, but what I found is a lot of people are very encouraging, like coming up to us saying, "You're doing great. What you're doing is really good. We need people like this." I talked to a law student from the University of Ottawa. She was also encouraging and she was interested, so I directed her to the We Need a Law website. So, This is an, an educational effort. Uh, we really do want to change hearts and minds to the point where there is enough Canadians who are demanding changes in our law, which would occur right here in these Parliament buildings, so that our pre-born neighbours are protected, just like all of us are. I'm here with Nikki, who is speaking with one of the volunteers who, who relayed something very, very striking. So I was speaking to the volunteer and she said she was really excited to be here, but she didn't want to take a look at all the flags once they were set out because she said it would just be too much. It was just too overwhelming. It's. It's amazing, the, the visual impact. I think as ARPA staff and We Need a Law staff, we underestimated the impact. The CTV news cameras were here already. The, 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 the photographer couldn't leave. He was just so overwhelmed by, by how many abortions. 
We want everyone in Canada to see this massive pro-life display, probably the largest pro-life display ever in Canadian history. Uh, a woman and uh, her grandson were pulling up the flags and we didn't want the protesters uh, pulling up the flags. So I went up to her and I said, I don't even know if you're one of us or, or one of them. And she says, oh, I'm, I'm just one of them. And But I, my grandson wanted to pull up the flags and I said, oh, that's fine. And they, they were very nice and had smiles and she came up afterwards and she says, uh, can I have a card? She says, uh, I wasn't one of you, but I am now. She says, just by your demeanor and your kindness. And uh, I just want to thank you for how you reacted to the situation. So. Through The Fate Teen Show, we're tackling issues influencing our nation's future, like freedom of conscience, racism, poverty, the debt, human trafficking, abortion, democracy, and much more. If you missed a show, you can watch anytime at fateteen.tv or on YouTube. We hope to see you there. We love Canada, and we want to see it strong for generations to come. That's why we do this show. We can't do it alone. We need your help. Unlike commercial TV, this program is 100% donor funded. If you'd like to see more episodes produced on important issues for our nation, please consider signing up to be a monthly partner or giving a special gift today. Every gift makes a real difference and all gifts are tax deductible. Together, we can build a better Canada for the future. Visit fateen.tv or call 613-552 Five five seven two to donate today. Okay, Tabitha with We Need a Law and Scott with It Starts Right Now or Right Now. Uh, so before the break, uh, we just showed that clip with the flags. My mm -hmm. gosh, that was right at Parliament. Did it catch the attention of any members of Parliament? Uh, I mean, it has to. They would have had to walk right by it to get into the legislature. I mean, it was all over the, the field in the front there. It was quite a display. And that was 100,000 flags. And even watching that clip again, I'm just, I'm always struck. 100,000 is so many. And you have to think, like, that's 100,000 preborn children. That's 100,000 women. There's 100,000 fathers as well. Like, there's so many impacted by abortion in this country. And that's, that's why we need to change that. We need to have a law mm -hmm. here. Wow, and that, that visual impact is just stunning. Yeah. So now I want to just shift for a moment here. And Scott, so, so you guys are uh, basically a strategic movement to get pro-life uh, individuals elected to parliament um, in every party, from what I understand. Tell us about what you're doing and why you're doing it. Sure. So our organization is focused solely on nominating and electing pro-life uh, politicians, both federally and provincially, right across Canada. And so, as you know, we're coming up to a federal election in about 358 days from the <laughs> taping of this uh, show, but who's counting? And we're very focused uh, in a very deliberate fashion. So we want to make sure that to each uh, election cycle, we're increasing the number of pro-life politicians in our legislatures. And so for the 2019 election, we're focusing on 70 ridings right across Canada. We've calculated there are the most winnable ridings for pro-lifers. So we're involved in their uh, finding well-rounded, excellent, young uh, pro-life candidates, uh, supporting them in their nomination. And once they win their nomination, finding and training pro-life volunteers that can start helping out um, in the spring of next year all the way to the election to make sure that they win their seats so we can build toward a pro-life majority in our legislature so that when we need a law comes up with the law and we introduce it in the House, we can start getting it passed. Mm. And what really strikes me about both of these movements, as I said in the intro, is that this is primarily next generation driven and a ton of women involved with it too. Have you noticed that this is a, an issue that the next generation is really being invigorated around? 
Yeah, well, it's, it's interesting you mentioned that because uh, my co-founder, my colleague, Alyssa Globe, of course, is female and uh, is also part of our generation, the younger generation of millennials. Uh, in our organization, it's not just young people. We have people of all ages from all across Canada, you know, all ethnic backgrounds, all religious, non-religious backgrounds uh, getting together. It's a far more unifying issue than a lot of people think it is. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, when you look at the polls, both in the United States and Canada, millennials and younger people, tend to be more pro-life. Uh, when looking at polls in other Anglosphere uh, nations like the United Kingdom, Australia, and the United States, uh, Generation Z, those born 1995 and later, tend to be the most pro-life. Mm. So it'll be interesting to see uh, that coming up. Uh, there's another pro-life organization called uh, the National Campus Life Network. They work with pro-life groups on campuses right across Canada, and they're seeing a lot of changes on campuses in a very positive direction. So I'm very excited working with all the pro-life groups and the movement on a go-forward basis here. Wow. So what you're saying is this isn't a dying issue, because <laughs> some people might like to might to suggest that. And, you know, one thing I love about your organization is so many people just feel like they don't know what to do to make a difference. And you guys make it so easy and so practical. Um, and one of the things, as you mentioned earlier, that you're targeting specific writings that you feel are winnable. Now, I want to clarify something. We're going to show a clip here in a, in a moment, but you're not um, partisan in the sense that if there's a strong pro-life candidate running in any party, you'll help people figure out how to support that person. Is that correct? Yeah, that's a very good point. Um, we are non, uh, we are a non-partisan organization. We uh, seek to work in all political parties. So, for example, in the House of Commons, there are 330 MPs, or 338 federal ridings. You need 170 of those MPs to be pro-life in order to pass legislation. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a lot of people just assume that all pro-lifers are within the Conservative Party of Canada. And a lot of them are. But, you know, mathematically, to have all 170 be from the Conservative Party is a very strong improbability. So over time, and we do have a plan, working within the other mainstream federal parties to make sure that we can allow pro-lifers eventually to run in them. And then once that we have that allowance to actually go forward and win those nominations um, in those parties within specific ridings across Canada, to have a complement of them from the other parties to build toward that 170 majority wow. we need in the House. Wow, and I want to emphasize again, you're using the word pro-life a ton, but what we're finding, or what you said earlier, is that even staunch pro-choicers are saying, hey, listen, there needs to be some sort of legislation. So I think even some of those pro-choice MPs, you know, would be really soft to, to what you guys have to say in terms of some limits, right? Okay, so let's watch this clip. This shows how easily we can potentially impact some of these winnable writings. So let's watch this. Well, I just find that so riveting that, you know, one person can make such a difference. And you guys have done the analytics on this. You know what you're talking about. Um, so let's talk to that one person out there. There's lots of one persons out there, but we've got about five minutes left in the show. What can people do practically uh, if they really want to make a positive impact on this, on this issue or other issues? So, Scott. 
Sure. So, like I said, we're coming up to the 2019 federal election. We're targeting 70 ridings for this one. Uh, not all 70 of these ridings have gone through the nomination process. There are a number of nominations that are still open. So, um, it's simply a matter of pro-lifers getting together behind a pro-life candidate, purchasing memberships so they can actually vote in the nomination. And then once that pro-life candidate wins that nomination, helping out. So that could be knocking on doors, that could be making phone calls, driving people to the polls. Um, every little bit helps. I've been involved in so many campaigns um, in my relatively young life <laughs> um, that, you know, they were one by one, two, maybe three votes. Um, you know, this past, as, as often as we win, and we do often win a lot of these nominations, we've won over 17 of these 70 so far, but we have lost three. And two of those three that we did lose, one was by 12 votes and one was by 26, in both cases by over 500 votes cast. So, you know, if you're one of those one people we're talking about out there, you know, grab, you know, your friends and your family that are pro-life in your riding. If there's a pro-life candidate, you know, purchase a party membership and make sure you get to the nomination because we can't afford to be losing this. Uh, like Tabitha said, it's 100,000 babies every uh, year. That's 378 or so every day. So every vote counts and the sooner we can get uh, a majority of pro-life MPs, MLAs, whatever the case might be provincially, the quicker we can get legislation passed, the more pre-born children will be able to save. Now, and to be clear, for those of us out there that aren't political geeks, you know, the difference between the nomination campaigns and an actual election campaign are that the nomination campaigns are deciding who's going to run during the election campaign. Right, and that those are the ones that have the the slimmest margins. That's right. Is that correct? That's right. So getting involved at the nomination level can really be the game changer, especially if you have a riding that almost always goes one way or another. Right. Absolutely. That's where uh, pro-lifers have their highest return on investment. That's where it can make the greatest impact, because in these party nominations, oftentimes you know you're talking about maybe a couple hundred people to vote, as opposed to forty or sixty thousand in a riding. Right. So it doesn't take very many to win these nominations. Wow. And so if people want to unpack this a little bit more. Get involved what's your website it starts right now .ca. there you go and you're super active on social media very much as so. well as all the Facebookers out there yeah okay we've just got a couple minutes left um, to both of you guys you know if we were sitting before the House of Commons right now you know and you had an opportunity to speak to our leaders as somebody from the next generation as a young woman like Tabitha what would you say to our leaders about this issue yeah I mean like we said it's it's not about um, necessarily being like, oh, just right away, the absolute. Let's talk about what we have common ground. We have so much common ground, whether we talk about late-term abortion or sex, sex, sex selection abortion. So I would just start the saying, look, we can do things, very practical things, very real things that would make a real impact on this country for the better. So let's start with where we've got that common ground and let's move towards a country that does recognize, recognize pre-born human rights. Mm, powerful. Scott, what would you say if you had our leaders right here? Tabitha took the words out of my mouth there. <laughs> but what she said. Right? Yeah, exactly. But even to compound upon that, that common ground that Tabitha and I have been speaking about uh, during this interview is quite large. There are a great number of Canadians that want some sort of restriction on abortion. And like how you had alluded to earlier, so many of them, when they find out that there are no legal restrictions whatsoever in this country, the only democracy in the world that has no legal restrictions, they are absolutely and rightfully shocked about that. Mm -hmm. And so what I would say to the leaders, this is a great political opportunity. Um, to take it from a bit of a self-interest perspective, is a great political opportunity, especially with the younger generation coming up, to really capitalize on this issue and put forward some transformative uh, legislation that would very much be beneficial to the country on a go-forward basis. Okay. Powerful. So what people can do, uh, you know, they can get involved in those nomination campaigns that you're suggesting. They can go to your website. What's the website? It's we need a law.ca and we also have a tool there where people can write to their MP or their MPP um, on these issues. It's called right. And it has like a form letter you just That's kinda... well, it guides them through the process of wow. finding the contact information and helping them craft the letter. Yeah. Yeah, and of course we can pray. Absolutely. And I just want to just finish off by saying one other thing too. One of the things that I just so love about what's happening here is here you got a cat. Catholic guy and you got are you reformed that's right you're reformed and I'm Pentecostal whatever you want to call me non-denominational and uh, this is an issue that is unifying people from so many um, Christian denominations but also like you said so many different cultures and generations and you know uh, this thing is going to be turning so anyway thanks for being here with us today you guys we're going to be tracking with what you're doing God bless you yeah. thanks so much for your time yeah. You know, one of the most divisive issues that we've seen in our nation over the last generation, of course, is the issue of abortion. 
And I'm wondering if there's actually a centrist position on this topic. Is there an opportunity here, whether it's for the Conservative Party or maybe even another political party, to recapture the center even on that issue and perhaps unite those two voter blocks uh, for support? I'm wondering if you have any thoughts on that. That's part of a much broader conversation that we seem incapable of having in our society about how the sexual relations between men and women should be handled. And I would say the most appropriate social conservative strategy in that regard is to push really hard for uh, continued respect for the sanctity and primacy of marriage as the proper as the proper container, let's say, for intimate activity between adults. I don't see the alternatives to that as being particularly attractive. I don't think people are particularly happy with, you know, serial promiscuity, let's say, and fragmented relationships and all of that. Like the alternative to marriage, dreadful as marriage is, the alternatives seem to be much worse. So I think the social conservatives should be beating the drum hard to have the institution of marriage supported in every possible way, and also to be doing what they can to market its value and utility to young people as really their best alternative, because I really do think it is. I think a very strong case can be made for that, and it's crystal clear that intact nuclear families are much better for children than fragmented families. It, the evidence, the empirical evidence for that is absolutely crystal clear, and I think the social conservatives have done a relatively poor job of of what would you say, acting as a proactive force to dem to 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 publicize the tremendous advantages to traditional marriage. Now that's going to solve the abortion problem to some degree on the production side, let's say. Thank you so much for joining us today to discuss impacting our nation in practical ways. Our goal with this show is to host conversations that help shape our nation on the issues facing Canada today. Unlike commercial television, this broadcast is made possible entirely by donations from concerned friends and individuals just like you. We'd like to ask you to consider joining our team as a monthly partner to help us keep these broadcasts going out weekly across our nation. When you sign up to partner with us, you are also helping support national prayer gatherings, equipping events, outreaches to the poor, and rescuing women and children from the sex trade, plus more. Call us today and say, yes, I want to be a part of Life Changing TV in Canada by partnering with you. You can visit us online at faithing.tv, or you can also give us a call at 613-552-5572. Thanks again for your support, and God bless you. You can save lives in just 15 minutes a week. Prayer is powerful. It reaches where hands and feet can't. It breaks chains. It opens eyes. It opens doors. It can set people free. Through the Justice Wall, you can be a part of a prayer chain interceding 24-7 for the ending of abortion, ending of human trafficking, and for the persecuted church. You can save lives through prayer. Only 15 minutes a week. Join the Justice Wall today. Find out more at justicewall.com. Do you have a desire for you and your loved ones to grow spiritually? Check out resources by Fateen, her husband, and some of our guests online at the bookstore. When you shop, not only are you getting quality resources, but you're also helping support this ministry and program. Visit Fateen.tv today. Christmas specials will be posted throughout the fall.